I am the education director at Portland State and today with the help of our fabulous education team I will be teaching you some games, uh, some theater games that we have found work really well on Zoom. For today, we are using Zoom as an example. That's what we've been using for our virtual learning, but we understand that there are different video conferencing platforms out there, and so feel free to translate whatever we teach you today for whatever video conferencing platform you're using. For our first game today, we're going to be playing a game called Alien Tiger Cow. Alien Tiger Cow is basically a more active version of Rock, Paper, Scissors. But instead of Rock, Paper, Scissors, we got an alien, a tiger, and a cow. And we do it with our whole bodies. So an alien looks like this. Beep, 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 beep. A cow looks like this. Moo. And a tiger looks like this. So those are our three options. But instead of rock, paper, scissors, where we're trying to get each other out, this is a collaboration teamwork game. So what we're actually trying to do is to match so that everyone's an alien or everyone's a tiger or everyone's a cow. But we never know which uh, animal or creature our teammates are gonna pick. So what we do is we all turn our backs and we count to three. We're gonna go one, two, three. That's what the facilitator will do. And then we're all gonna turn around and become one of the three options, the alien, the tiger, and the cow. And then each teammate is gonna look at everybody's screens, so it's important to have gallery view for this one. You're gonna look at everyone's screens and you're gonna see maybe there are a lot of tigers. And if there are a lot of tigers, maybe the next time you turn around, you're gonna be a tiger. So your goal is to try and anticipate what the whole group is gonna do. You have to do it in multiple rounds until everyone does it the same. Let's take a look. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Oh. <laughs> Our second game that we're going to be playing today on Zoom is called Why Were You Late? And it's an improv game. So the way that this game works is that one person is the late coworker and they are gonna get sent away. Um, and the way that we send people away in Zoom is that you go up to the top right-hand corner of their icon and you click the little dot, 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 and there is an option to send them to the waiting room. So that's the way that you send somebody away so they can't hear what you're planning. So once you've decided who that late coworker is gonna be, you send them away, and then you as a group decide the boss is gonna be the facilitator to start. Um, as you keep going and as kids get used to playing this game, I usually let one of them play the boss as well. But to start, I always play the boss. Um, so the boss is gonna first of all help the group decide where are we working? And you can pick anything. We've done a, a Purell making factory or Build-A-Bear. You can work wherever you want, a coffee shop. So that's the first thing that you decide. The second thing that you decide is that you decide why the late coworker is late. I like to set this up like a little scene. So I, as the boss, will kind of say, oh, Zoe is late again. I'm so tired of this. And can somebody please explain to me why, why she's late? And her coworkers, because they don't want Zoe to get in trouble, are going to explain a ridiculous story about why Zoe is late. Meanwhile, Zoe, who's in the waiting room, has no idea what reason we've come up with. So once we've decided why she was late, and you can make this as simple or as complicated as you want, depending on the group. Once we have decided why she was late, for instance, she was run, she ran over a pothole and fell into Narnia, or she uh, woke up and her pillow attacked her and she had to have a heart to heart with her pillow in order to calm it down before she could go to work. That one actually one of my students came up with. Um, so whatever the reason is, it can be totally ridiculous. Then we send Zoe back to the room, um, get her back from the waiting room. And then the boss asks the person who is late, 
questions, while the rest of the group is pantomiming the reasons why that person was late. What's really important is to be super clear about the order in which these um, prompts go. So you need to know step one, step two, step three, so that the whole group is pantomiming and leading for the same tactic. Let's check out when we play this game where Maddie was late. Everybody say, uh, bye Maddie. Bye Maddie. Okay, everyone. So first of all, uh, where do we work? We work at a yarn factory. We work at a yarn factory. Yes, we do. Um, okay, so I've, I've gathered all three of us here today to um, talk about a problem. As you might have noticed, your coworker, Madison, is not here. And this is, you know, this is becoming quite a habit that she's late. So can somebody please explain to me why on earth is she late for work again? Um, of course. Um, Maddie, Maddie was late um, this morning because she slipped on a knitting needle. Yes, that's right. She slipped on a knitting needle. Okay, so she slipped on a knitting needle. That doesn't sound like a very serious injury, so I don't get why why that made her late. Well, well, she 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 broke her pinky. She broke her pinky. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, oh, it looks like Maddie's coming. So um, if uh, your her story doesn't match yours, I guess you're all fired. So sounds like a bummer for you all. I hope that she uh, tells me that she did what you said. Here she comes. Maddie, Madis Madison, Madison, it's so good of you to finally join us. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you, I've been, pretty, I've been pretty angry this morning because you're late again and I would really like you to explain to me why you're late because your coworkers are giving me an excuse but I'm just having a hard time believing it. So can you explain with your own words what happened to you today? Yeah, I'm so sorry that I was late. I was trying to get to work. I was walking along and then I, I flipped. I, I, I just, I slipped. You and slipped. Fell. I slipped. I slipped on a, on a paint, on a paintbrush, on a, I slipped on a, a needle. Is that a needle? I slipped on a, a knitting, a knitting, a knitting. I slipped on a knitting needle. I slipped, slipped on, on a knitting, knitting needle. needle. Maddie. I slipped on a knitting needle and it really hurt. Wait, um, Maddie, Maddie, hold on. I'm going to stop you there. That is actually what your coworkers told me, uh, that you slipped on a knitting needle. But again, I'm just having a hard time understanding why that would make you late. So can you explain to me what, what happened? Hey, uh, you back there? What, you, what, excuse me, um, Isabella and Julianne, what, what are you doing back there, huh? Sorting the yarn. You're sorting yarn. Okay. All right. By that's color. Cool. By color. Good. You know I like it by color and texture yes. as well. Yep. Good. Okay. Anyway, Maddie, explain to me. So you slipped on a knitting needle. Yeah. So I slipped on a knitting needle and then um, I, I snapped up. I snapped up. I, I broke. I broke. I, I broke um, a, a coyote. I broke up. I you broke, broke. I'm sorry. I'm going to stop you right there. You <laughs> broke a coyote. What, what did the coyote ever do to you? The quiet coyote. I the uh, <laughs> I broke my finger. I broke no no. I broke my pinky. My pinky. I broke my pinky. You broke your pinky. I think we need to talk about your treatment of coyotes later. Um, but uh, you did in fact break your pinky. Can you show me your broken pinky as proof, please? Yeah. Ow. Ow. Oh. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> it looks really painful. I guess, um, you know what, Maddie, why don't you take the rest of the day off? Because I don't think that you can uh, sort yarn with a broken pinky. So I'm so sorry no, I ever doubted you. No, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Yay, Maddie! <laughs> Our third game that we're going to teach you, we call On the Nose. And On the Nose is a game that just is meant to get people's bodies moving. And it also offer, offers an opportunity for people to partner work, which is, can be really hard on a video conferencing platform. I'm going to explain it more in the Zoom room. We'll see you in a second. Um. 
um, let's pair us up. Uh, Isabella and myself will be paired and let's have Maddie and Julianne be paired. I'd like one person in each partnership to raise their hand, only one person in each partnership. Awesome. Okay. Um, so the person that's raising their hand, you're going to start as the leader and the person who did not raise their hand, you're going to start as the follower. Okay. And all you're going to be following is the person's hand. Okay. So their job as the leader is to show the follower how you want them to move, but the only thing you have is your hand, all right? And followers, I want you to imagine that there's a string coming right from your nose that attaches directly to the person's hand, okay? And your job is to follow that person's hand using your nose, okay? So as you do that, person who has the hand up, think about how you can really challenge your partner. How can you make them do weird things? What is the possibility of different ways to make your partner move using just your hand? So try and get as creative as possible. It really helps if we pin our partner. So I'm going to pin my partner, pin their video so that I'm just watching them. Okay. So we pinned our partners um, and let's have everybody stand up to do this activity. Everybody stand up to do this activity. All right. Um, I also, those of you who are thinking about leading this activity, I really like doing this with music. So I usually add music um, from my host computer while we play this game. Okay, I'm ready, Isabella. Ready? And three, two, one, go. person who is the, the leader, I want you to think about how can you make them move in a way that you haven't seen them move yet, whatever that means to you. <laughs> Whoa, awesome. And find an ending, whatever that means to you. game that we're going to teach you uh, for a Zoom or video conferencing platform is called Red Ball. And this is just a game that gets people's bodies and voices moving and it gets them thinking quick and being creative and it's a really good team building activity as well. So we're all going to imagine that we have a ball. The first person is going to imagine that they have a ball. And this is going to be a red ball. And the way that I pass this red ball to someone is I'm going to say their name and then I'm going to pass it with a sound and motion. Then whoever's name I said, they're going to catch the red ball with a sound and motion. Now, they are now going to pass this to the next person. Only this time, they're going to come up with a completely different thing that this red ball becomes. So it could become anything that they want it to. It could become a toothpick, and then they would say the person's name, and then they would toss the toothpick with a sound and motion specific to whatever item they chose. And the person would catch it, again, specific to whatever item they chose. Let's check out how Maddie, Isabella, Julianne, and I played this game. Ready? Isabella, red ball. Whoop. Madison, squall. <laughs> Julianne, marshmallow. Ooh. 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 Hannah, milkshake. Whoosh. Ooh. <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, Maddie, uh, refrigerator. Oh, 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 oh. 